guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm in my van. You guys know what happens when I'm in my van. I'm on my way to go get something. So, uh, just the other day, my friend Jason sent me a text message of a picture of a Facebook Marketplace listing that showed two engines for sale for a hundred bucks. So 50 bucks each. One was a Kohler 12.5 uh, Command, and also the other one was a 12 horsepower flathead uh, Briggs single over uh, single cylinder uh, flathead. Uh, the same engine on my Black Beauty. Those things are indestructible, actually. You know. Uh, anyway, so uh, I usually don't pay for anything. You know what I mean? So uh, I just I wanted to ask him: Is it fifty dollars for both or fifty dollars each? You know. And then uh, he said that there were $50 each, you know, but I could have the flathead for 40. So I thought about it for a while and stuff. And then he writes back, he goes, hey, are you Henry from Mowers and Blowers, Henry? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, oh yeah, watch your videos. And then um, he mentioned uh, that one of the engines is going to Nick from Bellport. <laughs> Nick from Bellport said he was going to go and buy it, uh, the Kohler Command one, for 50 bucks um, over the weekend. And so then uh, after a while he says, you know what? You want the engine? I want it to go to a good home. And uh, so he's given it to me. He's also giving me this uh, push mower too. So I'm on my way to Bohemia, where he lives. Uh, it's only a few exits away from my exit, so it's not too far, maybe 25 minutes or so. So I'm on my, on my way to his house. His name is Robert Kramer. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, Dr. Cosmo Kramer, proctology. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, Dr. Yeah, thanks. All right, I'm over here at uh, Robert Kramer's house. Say doing? hello to everybody, Robert. How you guys doing? Good. So look, he's giving me this. It's a 12 horsepower flathead. It's the same engine that's on my Black Beauty. And uh, he doesn't want this either. He says he's got a lot of stuff. And I says, you got a lot of stuff? I got a lot of stuff. And he's like, no, you, I've got a lot of stuff. I says, oh yeah? Let's see. <laughs> Man? Yeah, it's mine. Dude, I love that stuff. I used to have like four of them, but my wife made me get rid of it. Oh, nice, man. Kohler V-Twin. This is a beast, bro. This is your own personal one? This is my dad's. My neighbor gave it to us. Really? He didn't want it. This is a nice garden tractor. Look at, look at how beefy this is. Dude, if you had a nice... Solid, bro. Solid. Actually, man, what's unusual is your body is so mint. But look at the deck. Yeah, I know. That's deck is trash. Exactly what happened to that one. The deck trashed on that well, one. Well, this is gone. badass. This is this is worth thousands, bro. Look yeah. at the size of these wheels. Holy cow. He's going to sell it. He is going to sell it? Yeah. How much do you think he's going to sell it for? I don't know. He's looking around. Man, this is nice, though. If it wasn't, if it, if it was just a deck, that's a 46 deck. Uh, it's 48. Really? I'm going to rebuild the deck. I usually rebuild the decks. From I mean, deck. look, there's no rod or anything. It's just no. surface rust. All you got to do is just we, scrape we that off and repaint brown it. primer. Oh, yeah? That they use to put pipes in the ground. Yeah. Coat it in that. Last oh, forever. then you're good, you know? Because, look, there's no rot, man. Nope. And this is a nice tractor. DGT. How about that? I, I honestly got to tell you, I've never had a DGT, it's which is everything. garden tractor. Amps, RPMs. Really? Hours. It's only got 19.7 hours on it. No way. Look at it. Holy cow. Hardly used. Like new. Well, then that's the, weird, though. 19 hours and yet the deck is trash like that? Because he let it sit outside. No kidding. There is a, you know, the double relay? The double relay? No. The relay that's in here? Oh, where the hell is it? I don't know about any double relay. I mean, I've seen the, the double relay. The Kohlers relay. have the relays, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what was bad on this. Really? And the guy couldn't figure it out because every time you let go of the pedal, it would stall right away. Oh, but this starter, though, it's got the piggyback solenoid on it. Those are expensive. Yeah. I mean, if that if that solenoid ever went bad, it'd be a pain. Thankfully, Ooh. it was good. I've had about four or five of these. You know, these all sold for pretty good money, too. Yeah, well, starter gear just went. Is it Red Max? I, I've gotten all my stuff for free except this. Yeah, that's the way I like to do it, baby. My neighbor gave me that. Oh, and I bought my weed whacker because you know weed whackers. Yeah, you I totally know. I totally know. 
That's my first ever garden tractor. Really? This one here? Yep. I hate to tell you, this is not a garden tractor. Oh, well, lawn tractor. <laughs> lawn tractor, yeah. But it's uh This is what started my landscaping business. This is an LT4000. Uh, it's a uh it's an II series. II series. 86, I think. Hey, I got wheels like this too. It was over the snowblower that I showed. Well, look at that, a Kawasaki engine. Hey, that's not stock on here, is it? Nope. Yeah, I didn't think so. This, this mo mower has had three engines on it. Really? And it went from the original 12 horsepower little flathead yeah. to the Kohler that I'm selling to Nick to this one. Look at that. I would imagine that the uh, Kawasaki starters are expensive, huh? Uh, but mine the, but the, yeah, mine but, doesn't run a starter. But a pull rope works fine, right? Yeah. Um, you could put a starter on here. I have two of these, actually, the Kawasaki's. Do you really? Yeah, I have a walk behind back there with one, too. I'm saying you could put a starter yes, if you, you wanted can. to, but they're expensive, though, I think, right? The Kawasaki yeah. starters? I get all this stuff from my neighbor, Vinny. Uh -huh. He invented the catcher keeper. The catcher keeper? Yes. What's a catcher keeper? Well, this on. is interesting. And by the way, um, Robert tells me that he's camera shy. Does he seem camera shy to you? <laughs> That's the catcher keeper. Oh. Keepers, so the catcher. Uh huh. Oh, cool. So you can carry it without having to have it on the side. I see. That's cool, bro. I've never seen that before, actually. And it's a good idea because the space on top of here is always unused. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And also, people put it on this on top of here and it slides back and destroys the exhaust. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, how long has this guy been making this catcher keeper? He invented them a year ago. Yeah? He makes them in his garage. Really? Um, you could probably, if you go to any landscaping shop, any parts dealership, yeah. probably ask about it, you can get one from them. No kidding. He doesn't sell to certain people, he sells to businesses. Right, so he, yeah, so he sells it to retail stores. He's a distributor, pretty much. Well, yeah. manufacturer straight to distributor. That's pretty much how they all do it, you know? No Kawasaki. Yeah, very nice. This is my baby right here. Oh, yeah? Whoa. Oh, hold on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's the same one as the other one. Yeah, it looks like an LT4000 so, or II series, right? But it looks like you extended it. Yes. It has another chassis welded on the back. No kidding. The next year up from well, where, where's the weld where's the weld piece right there the, where's the other oh there you go cool bro that's gotta get cleaned up how did you uh what kind of welder a mig or a tig or MIG. is it, oh, don't tell me it's just like an arc welder like mine it is <laughs> is it really yeah but and I, you did that I, that's okay, good so i went to marine Wars Force technology in boses yeah and i welded it the rest of the way oh i see that's gas now that's it was originally nice. welded with mig and then i drove it around with a little tiny 5.5 GX160. Is that a is that the stock tranny in here? No, it's uh solid axle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, man. Look at that. that I've never seen that before. It has a board out, 18 horsepower, a post win. Ooh, look at that. It's fully rebuilt in the interior. It looks ugly on the outside. A uh, hor horizontal shaft on the side like yes, that. It's from 85. Now, okay, cool. Now look, so Usually you would have the motor either uh, the crank facing forward or backwards, that's right? But to have it on the side like this, this I mean, is your, your it's your back. idea, right? Yes. That's I've interesting. I designed this whole entire thing, all these brackets, mm -hmm. everything. The way the hood flips up, I love the way this flips up. Holy cow, look at that. And it this seems a little lower too. Oh yeah, it's the, the, the original axles are right here. Okay, there are the spindles there. I see. These I, were reinvented. I gotcha. Wait, you didn't fabricate these, did you? My dad did. Wow. My dad has been a welder for 34 years. That's genius, bro. He fabricated on everything on this thing. What are you going to do? Uh, just straight pipe? No mufflers? It's probably going to go down to the side pipes. Out. They look kind of sick. They're going to come out the sides. Oh, yeah. I know. I've seen those. Oh, that would look badass, bro. This is cool. Very good. How long do you figure it'll take before you get this baby so I've running? I've been working on this for about three years, but <laughs> school kind of cut me off because I graduated in 2020. Uh huh. So. Well, school's important, bro. Yes, it is. Very important. Ooh, Everything I'm bored out, got bored out, 30 over, branded pistons, branded rods. These are uh, Toro decks? Toro deck, and then that's one of the rebuilt for the uh, 4000. You know, I gotta tell you, these Toro decks are very uh, useful. What the hell? But they're, I was just gonna say, Look at it. they're infamous for rotting right there and right there. 
Now, I'm surprised you don't have anything there because the three or four I've had always rots there, not there. So I'm amazed that it's rotted there. The people before <clears throat> you didn't take care of you. They don't really care. Nobody really does. Hey, so Rob, what's this? This is a Ford? Yeah, it's an ST2826. It's from 1977. 1977? Um, I picked this up from a guy. He didn't want it to go to the scrapyard. He asked me if I was scrapping it or not. I said no. He was like, good, because this thing is rare. I've never seen these before. So this is a uh, updraft uh, two-piece flow jet also. And uh, what does it do? Runs like shit. And it leaks, doesn't it? Yeah, the carburetor leaks everywhere right here. That's exactly what I was telling you guys, man. These two-piece flow jets, or they're, they're, they're known for leaking. fuel at the side. Really? Yeah, well, it's overfilling the cylinder. Um, now, do you know if this is actually Ford or is it Ford contracting a company to put the Ford label on it? I think it's actual. I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure my subscribers will leave a comment. If you guys know if this is actually Ford makes it, like Ford Motor Company makes it, or is it another company that makes the snowblower and they put the Ford name on it to sell, you know, like Craftsman. Cool. Cool stuff, man. Thing in the front's a monster, though. And your, uh, this vac, it's it's just a vac, not a vac chipper, right? That's, that's a, a Billy that's Goat. A, yeah. Uh, you know, the bag, the baggers on these rip. things are so expensive, man. They rip. Yeah, they rip, and, and you probably can't find them very, yeah. uh, very easily it to replace. It grinds everything up. It does? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. That's nice. You know, uh, you could get like a 800 to a grand if this was in perfect condition. You know what I mean? I don't know about nowadays, but... I use this when I trim the bushes. Sucks all the bush clippings up. Oh, that's a, that's a big little wonder too. Yeah. That's this a big one. This was my neighbor's. It was from a landscaper. It was originally seized. Yeah? They, uh, he told them that it would burn oil if they got it, you know, uh -huh. started working well, on it. It burns a little bit of oil. That's but, that one piece flow jet that I hate working on. It's got diaphragms. Oh yeah. You have to oh. You have to dump fuel in the uh, where the spark plug is yep. every time you try to start. And this also, thing. there's a thousand linkages there to the throttle. Well, I think it's got a brand new one on it. Really? So I think that's new. It's nice though. I had one of the uh, kind of a couple of these actually with the older engine. Blows really well. Yeah, you know, Nick's <clears> picking up that. Oh, so this is the other engine that Nick from Bellport's supposed to pick up. I just texted him, by the way. <laughs> So I'm back from Robert's house. Good kid. Thanks a lot to Robert for uh, hooking me up with all this free stuff. Could always use a couple of baggers, push mower for the uh, spring when things start uh, picking up for lawnmower sales. I have a shroud, no problem, and I think you just need a cable. I might have that too, not sure. He also gave me this uh, Troy built uh, flex style um, weed whacker. You can remove the uh, weed whacker head and put on any of the attachments that it you could that are available for this model. Also an LT1000 gas tank, which I could always use, and also my flathead 12 horsepower single cylinder engine that he gave me. Uh, he says it works. So uh, I might try to put this on uh, one of my uh, hauler tractors in the back that don't have engines uh, relatively soon, you know, when I run out of projects to do. But as you guys know, it always seems like I always have a project, you know, it never ends really, you know. But uh, today's video was just a free haul of future projects. So, th so thanks a lot to Robert Kramer for all this stuff. Go check them out on Instagram. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys later on Mowers and Blowers. from mowers and blowers as a youtuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis i worry about the harmful effects of the 10 percent ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station here on the east coast 
as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, fire's right up! See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers! Hey! If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye